Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you a quick tip on how to effectively create extreme speed from a stationary object for versions CC 2014 and later. Before we begin, make sure you hit the subscribe button to let you know as soon as I upload new Photoshop tutorials. I provided this photo of a stationary bullet train. Its link is in my video's description or project files. The first step is to place the front of the train onto its own layer. For your convenience, I already created a shape for you. To access it, open your channels panel. If you don't see it, go to Window and Channels. Control click or command click the channel to make a selection of its shape. Open back the layers panel and press Control or command J to cut and copy the shape within the selection onto its own layer. Temporarily hide the layer. Make the train photo active. We'll make a copy of it so we always have the original photo intact. Press Ctrl or Command J. Before we apply the speed blur effect to the photo, we'll fill in the nose of the train with the background because we don't want the effect to blur the nose of the train. To do this, open your lasso tool and carefully draw closely around the nose of the train. Press Shift and the F5 key at the top of your keyboard to open the fill window. Choose Content to Wear and click OK. We just want it to roughly fill in the tip of the train. Deselect it by pressing Ctrl or Command D. We'll convert the retouched train photo into a smart object so we have the ability to modify the speed blur at any time. Click the icon at the top right corner and click Convert to Smart Object. Go to Filter, Blur Gallery, and Path Blur. This was first made available in CC 2014. If you don't see blue or red and blue paths, press Ctrl or Command H. Basically, the Path Blur tool creates motion blurs along paths. By unchecking Edit Blur Shapes, the red arrow lines will disappear. I find that repositioning the Path Blur lines is easier when the Edit Blur Shapes is unchecked. Go to the left end of the line and press and hold Ctrl or Command as you drag it past the left edge of the document. Drag the right point of the line to approximately here, making sure that the angle of the line is following the perspective of the photo. We'll add another path blur by placing your tool to the left edge of the image and dragging it along the photo's perspective. Double click it to end the path blur line. Continue to do this until you have approximately this amount of path blur lines. Now that we have them in place, Uncheck Centered Blur, which will make our motion blur more directional. We'll leave Taper at 0% since we don't want our motion blur to trail off gradually. Check Edit Blur Shapes. This immediately adds the red arrow lines, which will allow us to adjust the speed and shapes of the beginning and end points. We'll drag the left red arrow to approximately here, which will increase our end point speed. We'll drag the right red arrow down as well, which will also increase the endpoint speed on this end. Click the end point to enable Edit Blur Shapes. Drag the arrow to the right to approximately here to increase the endpoint speed about this much. Drag the right red arrow in to decrease the endpoint speed. We're decreasing it because we don't want the background behind the nose of the train to look as fast as the speed of the back of the train. Continue these steps as we adjust the endpoint speeds for the beginning and end of the path blurs. Because the motion blur has obliterated the natural grain of the photo, we'll add it back in by opening the noise window and dragging the grain amount slider to the right a bit. I'll keep the rest of the noise settings at their default amounts. Then click OK at the top. Lastly, we'll make the front of the train appear as if our camera panned along with it, snapping the photo at the precise moment it passed the camera's lens. Make the cutout visible and active. If you see a little bit of the train's motion blur under it, press V to open your move tool and drag the cutout until we hide the blur under it. Lastly, we'll blend together the entire train. Click the Layer Mask icon to make a layer mask next to the cutout. Open your Brush Tool and Brush Picker. 
Pick a soft round brush. For this image, make its size 800 pixels, the hardness 0%, and the opacity and flow both 100%. Place your cursor approximately near the back end of the cutout and click once. Reduce the brush's opacity to 50% and reduce its size to 600 pixels. Place your cursor a bit to the right of where you clicked before and click once. Now that we have a finished image, a lot of people have asked me, how do you save it? Well, there's a couple of ways of doing this. One way is to open the list at the top right of the Layers panel and click Flatten Image. Then go to File, Save As, and save it as a JPEG. However, I only do this after I save my entire document as a Photoshop PSD file. Another way is to make a new layer above the topmost active layer and press Alt Control Shift E on Windows or Option Command Shift E on a Mac to make a composite snapshot. Then save your image the same way as before. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.